will the United States under the Biden administration address climate change? To discuss it, I'm joined by James Tebow. He is president of the Chronicles Group. James, welcome. How are you today? Good. So we will we see a so-called sea change in U.S. policy on climate under President Biden and John Kerry, his choice to head up international efforts on climate change? Well, uh, the, this, as I say, it's, we're evolving into a whole new era in, on the planet. And uh, hopefully the new administration will recognize these realities. Um, I, I've had to, I've, and with my work that I've been doing, I've, you know, it's been kind of complicated because I mean, for example, dealing with the National Science Foundation, they've had to use weasel words to get around climate and warming of temperatures and uh, the global trend 2035 study which is done uh, periodically they do that you know they've had to avoid using that term mm -hmm. so it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion that, that we we can't deal you know the former administration hasn't dealt with reality yeah. or has been forced to uh, manipulate words and deeds. And, and it's also reflecting in its policies. So it's, I think it's been a very dangerous period of time because this is going to be a new era. I mean, we're, we've never had 8 billion people on the planet. We've never had to feed not 8, 9, 10 billion people on the planet. And, and, it, and the impacts of warming of temperatures, I call it a climate, a climate crisis, is gonna be profound. And it transcends political ideology. It's, it's what it is. And we're gonna to have to plan for the future. And, um, and that's the way I see it. And, yeah. and I, I'm hoping that, that the new administration acknowledge these realities and starts implementing solutions. Well, it's certainly been part of now President Biden's uh, platform all along. So I think we can expect that there'll some attention will be paid. And a change in terminology is, of course, a good first step. But how about when it comes to international efforts? First of all, based on where we've been in the last few years, does the United States still even have credibility on this subject in the international community? Well, it's shaky. I mean, I've had I've had a lot of communication with people throughout the world, and and uh, and it's and we're in you know, and it's almost like to the point we're we're living in denial as a foreign policy situation. I I I whether or not the Paris Accords, you know, is realistic or not. Um, I think that it hurts us when we're not dealing with everybody on an international level. At the very least, we need to be exchanging ideas and mm -hmm. and 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 developing all kinds of projects in terms of implementation. Right. And I well, think that yeah. that's what's been lacking. And I think that we need to. I hopefully, and I know that. Um, that uh, uh, Joe Biden has is, is indicated that one of the first things he's going to do is to go back and join the Paris Accords. Virtually but, on his first you know, day in office, a lot of indeed, things in fact. That we, yeah. Right. And I think mm -hmm. that's important. Um, and I think it's more than just symbolic. I think it's important in terms of talking to other countries, particularly countries which are, you know, like China, India. Uh, big countries that have po high populations and have to deal with those realities like uh, 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 renewable energy mm -hmm. issues. I mean, these are these are issues that are really difficult. I've, I've spent time in northern China, and the coal industry is very prominent in northern China. And they would argue with you, you're looking at from an economic geogra geographical perspective, they have limitations on on um, their land and, and the mm -hmm. capabilities of what they can expect from the land. And and, and I think that when, when you're dealing with populations like they have to confront with over a billion people, it's a completely different ball game. I don't even think we can get our head around that yeah. reality. But what and will so our voice on the internet? 
will our voice on the international stage carry credibility, given the fact that we pulled out of these accords or refused to be part of them? And now we're back in. The world community will say, well, heck, you know, four years from now, maybe you'll pull out again. We don't believe you anymore. You're, you're, you're hypocritical. You can't be dictating terms of the rest of the world if you yourself, United States, isn't following these dictates. How can we get that authority back? Well, first of all, I think that the, you know, the rest of the world looks to the United States or has in the past in taking a leadership role in a lot of these issues. And I think that we need to be proactive in terms of indicating the past is the past. We have a new administration, we have a new focus, and that's where we're gonna be. And then also, I think that we need to come up with innovations. I personally believe that, as I mentioned, that we're, up, we're moving into another, another era in the world. And it's going to require new infrastructure throughout the world. I always believe that we need to look at the world holistically mm -hmm. uh, and, and all the impacts that are happening on the planet. We need to look at holistic from an ecological perspective. Right. And, and the warming of temperatures is going to affect a lot of countries as it progresses. It, it could have uh, create conflicts between countries. Uh, we have water and food security issues, water, energy and food security issues. And I think that the United States has a capacity to work with scientists within its own country and collaborate with scientists throughout the world in order to implement a new a, a, implement solutions. But there are so, so many I mean, directions. I, way, I mean, I think that what we have to do. Is very sure. There are so many directions we could go. There are so many directions we could go. Assuming that it's not already too late, as some pessimists would suggest that it is, where should we be directing our resources right now specifically to what aspects of what action should we specifically be taking in order to curb the impact of climate change? Creating technologies uh, that uh, takes, uh, uh, you know, uh, carbon dioxide out of the out of the mix, you know, be able to deal with that, be able mm -hmm. to deal with infrastructure. I think that this is really important. I mean, uh, I've been working on a, Cal on, a, on a project related to California watershed and it's a mess. And we have watersheds are all over the world. Yeah, documentary and, and in fact, is correct? Ba the foundation for, for a yeah, right. It's a, you're right. working on a documentary so, I mean, about, the California, that, about the I mean, California watershed. I look at Cal I'm, I'm, and I'm wondering, uh, based on that, what have you learned? Yes, right. About, what have you learned about fires and uh, and their impact and how, how they should be addressed, how fire control should be? Uh, we should go forward with that in, in, in the future on a global basis. Well, before I, before I uh, get into that detail, um, I look at California as a microcosm of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's 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 the fifth largest economy on the planet, and uh, and it has uh, and its ramifications are profound. It has Mediterranean climate, which means we there are only five countries in the world that have Mediterranean climate, and they are the food baskets of the world. So I mean, these are issues we have to look at, and that's how important. Uh, you know, watersheds are, and there are 250 or so watersheds on the planet, and they're all in a mess. And, uh, and that's what we're going to have to focus a lot of- A mess in what way? What do you mean? What do you mean when you say a mess, James? Well, in terms of California, we've had the federal government institute a, a, a policy years ago called the fire suppression policy. Mm -hmm. And they put out every single fire that, that would evolve as a result Fires are part of the ecological system, and by putting out every fire, we've had a situation where the forest has grown significantly, and there's not enough water to be able to handle that, and 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 a lot of trees have died. There are all kinds of ecological issues which have happened to the trees, insects all kinds of things that have killed these trees mm -hmm. and we, all these small trees have evolved. And so therefore, and then there's, and there's incredible fuel on the ground. And with the recent fire we've had was a perfect storm, so to speak. We had, 
incredibly hot temperatures. We had, in addition to that, wind conditions. And then you have these, the fuel. I mean, it's a recipe for disaster. I was filming uh, in the mountains just above Fresno, just before the Creek Fire, came, uh, uh, they, they referred to the, as the Creek Fire, mm-hmm. that broke out. And you could see it. It was just obvious. So it, it was just an accident waiting to happen. And so yeah. we're going to have to, I'm referring to, a, I have a degree in landscape architecture, and I'm a regional planner, and I'm uh, from an ecological point of view and that's what we have to do in in california the, Cal, the sierra nevada mountain uh, uh, sierra yeah. nevada uh, mountains but throughout the world um throughout we're world. almost out of time here but i did want to touch very briefly on the issue of infrastructure because transportation and logistics depend so much on it and the supply chain is is hugely responsible for carbon emissions as you know in so many different ways how would you approach the issue of infrastructure as it relates to supply chains and what we can do to mitigate the impact of climate change in that particular area Well, it's a great question, uh, and and I, as being a regional planner, we we design on a on basically a piecemeal basis. We don't think about the bigger picture, and and I think, as I say, we have to plan uh, to rebuild basically the world, the whole infrastructure to the world, and that mm-hmm. includes green infrastructure as well. And, and we're going to have to start doing that now. We're going to have to look, as I say, we're going to have to look at it holistically on a global level and, and redesign the whole planet in many ways. That's how I, I, that's how I see it. Yeah. In many places, we've got war zones in the world. We've got all kinds of problems. And, and, it's, mm-hmm. a, and it's not abstract at all. It is a reality. Yeah. There's a lot on the agenda these days, but perhaps there's some hope in the new administration coming in and putting an emphasis on this globally. Uh, James Thibault, I want to thank you so much for helping us to understand what are some of the big macro issues related to climate change and how we might move forward to address that issue. Thank you so much for being with me today. It's my pleasure.